On behalf of the Lockhart Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors and staff, good evening and thank you for tuning in to the 86th Annual Chamber Banquet. Tonight's program is made possible by our kind and generous sponsors, our premium presenting sponsor, Central Texas Refuse, our platinum sponsors, First Lockhart National Bank, Pegasus Schools, Blue Bonnet Electric Cooperative, The Original Blacks Barbecue, and Texas Farm Bureau. Our gold sponsors are My Emergency Room 24-7 and GBRA. Our bronze sponsors are Rucker Ohlendorf Insurance and Kinder Morgan. And our supporting sponsors are Wilson Riggin Lumber, Wendy R. Gifts, Buffalo Clover Flower Company, Carolyn A. Bryant, CPA PC, Logos, and Lockhart Sports Medicine. The continuous support and generosity of our sponsors and you, our virtual guests, is what makes our program and organization a success. I would also like to thank Lockhart ISD for allowing us to use their facilities at Lockhart High School for tonight's event. Mr. Bishop and the AV students at Lockhart High School for filming and the production of the virtual program that you are watching right now. The mini lemon bunt cakes that you received for dessert were prepared by Lockhart High School culinary arts students directed by Ms. Broadbeck. These students are full of talent and have very bright futures ahead of them. Thank you for volunteering your time and talents to the Lockhart Chamber of Commerce. Tonight's dinner that you picked up in our drive through was prepared by Chamber Board Member Eric De Hoyos of Pegasus Schools. As always, he never disappoints. We're grateful to you and your Pega peeps, as you call them, for all that you do. I would also like to thank our banquet committee for taking our traditional banquet plans and putting a COVID-19 spin on them to make it possible. Thank you, Missy Hagen, Alicia Tidwell, Chelsea Cox, and Raquel Barone. It's also important for us to recognize the dignitaries in our community who work tire tirelessly year round to make our community the wonderful place that it is and continues to grow to be. State Representative John Sirier, Caldwell County Judge Hoppy Hayden, Caldwell County Commissioners BJ Westmoreland, Barbara Shelton, Ed Terrio, and Joe Rowland. Our District Attorney Fred Weber, and our district judge, Chris Schneider. Our Lockhart City Council, Mayor Lou White, Angie Gonzalez Sanchez, Juan Mendoza, and Derek David Bryant. Carrie McGregor, Jeffrey Michelson, and Brad Westmoreland. And our city manager, Mr. Steve Lewis. Our Lockhart ISD School Board, President Steve Johnson, Vice President, Mr. Michael Wright, Dr. Barbara Sanchez, Renee Rios, Tom Guyton, Sam Lockhart, and Warren Burnett. At this time, I would like to invite the mayor of the city of Lockhart, Lou White, to give you a brief city update. Good morning. I'm Mayor Lou White, and I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce for the opportunity to share updates about the city. The annual city report should be completed uh, shortly, and that will be available online, but I'm going to hit some highlights today. I want to applaud the Chamber and our community for being creative in reaching out to the community in the form of social media, drive-by and drive-through events, and events with social distancing and proper COVID restrictions. We're all thankful to see the end of 2020. The pandemic has certainly affected our community as it has elsewhere. We've lost businesses, jobs, and more importantly, we've lost friends and loved ones. We've seen drastic changes to our lifestyles and changes in the way we communicate. Zoom meetings, distance learning. We have seen our community step up and do their part to protect their families and our city. Citizens are practicing, practicing safe COVID prevention, working from home, spending more time with their families, helping their neighbors, shopping locally, 
and patronizing local businesses more. People are being more creative and turning to alternative business ideas like the local farmer's market to supplement their incomes. The city has tried to help where we can. We've provided assistance to ease the burden of utility costs by delaying cutoffs and offering financial aid to those in need. We've provided uninterrupted service at City Hall with additional payment options and virtual access at times. The city has also given out over $100,000 in grants and loans to struggling businesses. 2021 is here, and I was going to say with hope, but we're getting off to a slow start. Hospitalizations in our area are above the 15% set by the governor, and that's caused him to uh, order reduced capacity for our retail establishments, restaurants, <clears throat> to 50 percent and has caused the closing of bars temporarily. Hopefully this is a short-term effect. But we do enter 2021 with hope. Hope in the form of a vaccine. Hope that we can start to turn the spread of COVID around. It's not something that's going to occur right away. The distribution of the vaccine is beginning very slowly. The city and the county do not decide the distribution and the amount of vaccine that we receive. We'll have to wait on our allotments and wait as the tier system of choosing who gets the vaccine first play out. In talking to the vaccine distribution centers and the local physicians, we'll have to be patient and continue to be safe until we are notified of the vaccine's availability. I have been told recently that the first responders have all been offered the vaccine and that plans are to begin vaccination in the nursing homes very soon. The over 65 distribution should begin shortly after that. I suggest that you watch the distribution center's websites for their scheduling system and follow that closely. Please stay in touch with your local physicians as well and they should be able to help. The business of the city, though, must continue. We've recently made a huge commitment to purchase property on Highway 130 to develop as a new industrial park. We should have an announcement soon about the first business to locate there. There have already been recent announcements about a large robotic farming company and an ice cream distribution center bringing investment, dollars, and jobs to town. New housing starts that have been discussed recently are moving forward with over 500 lots that will be platted and offered for construction. Our park improvements continue. We've just completed the latest phase of the trail through the city park, and you should see more improvements in our parks uh, throughout this year. Our, med our medical needs continue to be a challenge. Discussion is ongoing about after hours care and what form it should take and who should provide this. The pandemic has put a severe strain on our medical service providers and the willingness of large medical providers to expand in Central Texas, but we will continue to keep an eye on the future and what it will look like post-COVID. The city has improved its communication with a public information office using its website and social media to keep everyone informed. Please connect with the city and the county's website and Facebook pages, pages for the local uh, late, latest announcements about vaccine availability, public service announcements, and information about developments in the city. I'm very proud of our city's strength, our resilience, our understanding, and compassion for our fellow citizens. With everyone's help and participation, we will get through this and we will, move, we will move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor White, for your presentation and your service to our community. And congratulations on your reelection. We're grateful to work with you for another three years. Now, please welcome Mr. Mark Estrada, Lockhart ISD Superintendent, for a brief update on our school district. 
Hello, my name is Mark Estrada, Superintendent of Schools in Lockhart Independent School District. And I wanna thank the Chamber for allowing me some time to tell, to tell you the great things that are happening in Lockhart Schools as we speak. First, I'd like to introduce our Board of Trustees. Uh, as you may know, in November, we had a board election and had uh, three new trustees join our board. Uh, Dr. Barbara Sanchez, Mr. Rene Rios, and Mr. Sam Lockhart, our new board members. Um, of course, um, trustees that are returning are trustee uh, Tom Guyton, uh, board secretary uh, Warren Burnett, board vice president Michael Wright, and board president Steve Johnson. I do want to recognize uh, the Education Foundation for Lockhart ISD for the wonderful support uh, that we receive from them uh, every year. The foundation, once again, uh, will be contributing about $60,000 directly to our classrooms uh, through teacher uh, innovation grants. And we wanna thank them so much for their continued support of our kids and for our teachers and encouraging innovation across Lockhart ISD. A quick overview, uh, we do have about um, over 6,100 students this year, 700 employees, 300 square miles of Caldwell County uh, that we cover. We are um, recognized as a 5A school district. That means uh, Lockhart High School is a 5A high school, which is the second largest classification in the state of Texas. Uh, we are recognized by the Texas Education Agency as a district of innovation. And um, we constantly wanna push uh, what we're doing to support our kids and support our community uh, in, in innovative ways. Our annual budget's a little over $62 million and our tax rates uh, $1.16 this year. And as you'll see, uh, the tax rate has gone down from $1.33 to $1.26 last year, uh, this year to $1.16. We're very proud of that rate. Uh, as you can see, compared to school districts in Central Texas, uh, we're one of the lowest all of, of all of Central Texas. Uh, some districts uh, as high as $1.46 uh, up in, in Hutto. Uh, Leander's $1.43, Pflugerville, um, Hayes $1.40, uh, and you can see uh, all of the comparison districts with Lockhart there at $1.16, uh, and we believe that uh, we provide a tremendous value to our community. Uh, although our, our tax rate uh, is much lower than our peers, we, we know that the ed education and the quality of education that our kids receive is, uh, is top-notch and uh, comparable to any school district across the state of Texas. In terms of COVID-19, this has really been a huge part of, of obviously our, our lives uh, in the world, but also, um, you know, as we look to educating kids, uh, COVID-19 has, has caused us to, uh, to, to respond to that. Uh, we're very proud of the fact that we've been able to, since COVID-19, uh, provide over 800,000 meals during school closure periods. So, uh, as you know, there have been certain times where we've had to have schools closed. And during that time, we've continued to uh, feed our students uh, through bus routes and through pickup systems uh, and, and have done that almost a million times. And um, we're, very proud of, we're very proud of that. Currently, we have about 70% of our students learning on campus and about 30% of our students learning virtually at home. Uh, that is the, the parent's choice. and uh, we support that choice, uh, whether it's a virtual learner or in-person face-to-face uh, -face learning. So far this year, we've spent uh, about $2 million on COVID-related expenses. Uh, this is everything from school safety uh, to technology um, to uh, anything that you can imagine in regards to uh, educating our students and keeping our students and staff safe. Uh, we do, our, we are working with um, county uh, officials, um, and then also state and federal uh, officials to have some of that money reimbursed. Uh, but that is a, a long process, but we do expect to have uh, much of that reimbursed to, uh, to the local district here. Um, of that, uh, we've spent about $800,000 in HVAC improvements uh, to ensure that um, our air filtration um, is of, of uh, great quality across the school district. Um, these are um, not just HVAC, but you also see some 
um, UV uh, filtration systems across the districts that have been installed um, to ensure that the air quality is, 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 is of good quality. We've also, um, you may have heard about our Lion Link uh, initiative, which is an initiative that uh, helps families who are not able to um, provide home internet at home. Uh, we've set up a system to where we can get them uh, high-speed internet so that their child um, is, is connected and can continue to do their learning if they're not able to come to school. Uh, this school year, we also provided every student with all the school supplies that, that they uh, may need, um, as well as a one-to-one -one device program where every student in Lockhart ISD has a Chromebook, um, has their school supplies provided for them this year, and if needed, um, internet uh, services. We also obviously have a COVID dashboard that is updated uh, daily, uh, any day that we're in session, um, and a, a response plan that you can find on our website as well. Every year, uh, we are laser focused on growing kids, and th this year um, is no different. If anything, it's even more important that we strive for 1.5. Uh, you've probably heard this before, but our goal and our target is to grow every kid a year and a half in grades K through eight in math and reading. Um, of course, uh, in the uh, Lockhart High School and at Pride High School, uh, we want 90% of our students taking the English 2 star to meet those progress measure requirements as well. Um, there's much to be celebrated. As I mentioned, Lion Link uh, is um, a point of national recognition for the district. Uh, we continue to uh, receive calls and supporting other districts and um, doing what we are able to do. Uh, also, the Texas Association of School Boards um, and their exceptional governance team continue to call upon our Board of Trustees to help train uh, Board of Trustees across the state of Texas um, and to replicate some of the systems um, and ways of thinking that uh, we operate our school district in. We're very proud of that. We continue to grow and expand our career and technical education courses at Lockhart High School, uh, utilizing the um, quality facilities that were part of the 2014 bond and continuing to ensure that our kids are not only prepared for college, but are prepared for the real world once they exit uh, Lockhart High School with a, a certification and a job ready skill. Our fine arts program as well as another point of pride, um, even during COVID, our staff is working incredibly hard to ensure that our kids receive a whole child education that uh, is challenging them and is engaging them uh, in school and uh, not just through academics, but in uh, enrichment activities as well. I'm proud of our, our cross country and tennis in the fall. Um, went to the playoffs with cross, cross country, boys cross country, uh, making it to the state meet. Uh, once again, I believe it's almost the 30th time that our cross country team has, has done that under the, the tutelage of uh, Coach Scott Hippenstiel. Uh, but we're incredibly proud of all of our kids who continue to step up. Uh, incredibly proud, proud of our staff who continues to step up uh, during COVID-19 uh, when so many things are ever changing and um, they continue to, to do whatever it takes to ensure that our kids are growing and our kids are, are successful. Uh, we still are working on addressing the, the COVID slide. It's a very real, real challenge across the country, across the world, uh, as schools are, are canceled or uh, many students are learning virtually. Uh, we're seeing that kids are not learning as much or not retaining as much. That's something that we're, we're focused on improving on so that our kids um, are learning and are getting everything possible out of their, their education. Uh, we also are looking at um, planning for growth. We continue to, to grow as a, as a school district. Uh, as I mentioned, we have over 6,100 students. Uh, we have seen uh, this year, especially in our pre-K, uh, a loss of enrollment, but we know that um, that is not because the kids are not there, but more a, a symptom of COVID-19 and, and folks wanting to keep their kids home, especially uh, the, the younger students. But we know based on our, our birth rates um, and the folks living in the community that those kids, we are expecting them to come to school in kindergarten and especially in first grade here uh, in, in the future. So um, growth is still something that we need to be, to be thinking about. Um, 
continuing to uh, increase the partnerships, just like the, the Chamber of Commerce is a, a great partnership with Lockhart ISD. We're always wanting uh, to build more partnerships with uh, businesses, especially, especially as our um, CTE program expands. Please let us know if you would um, like to support our career and technical education programs. I'd be happy to, uh, to talk with you about uh, supporting our schools and our, and our students in that regard. Also to stay connected, we invite you to follow us on our website, on Twitter, on Facebook. Uh, we have a mobile app as well uh, for Lockhart Independent School District. And you can stay up to everything going on with the district. And I wanna thank you for, for tuning in. Thank you for supporting the chamber and uh, hopefully you had a great meal and have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Estrada, for your presentation and for your part in ensuring the success of our teachers and students. I know that I am proud to have a future Lockhart Lion in my home and that she will undoubtedly receive the best care and education when her time comes to be a student in Lockhart ISD. I would now like to recognize our chamber leaders who are so often seen serving in our community. Here is the Lockhart Chamber Board of Directors for 2021. Past Chairperson Linda Hayden, Chairperson BJ Westmoreland, Chairperson Elect Missy Hagan, our Secretary Rhonda Reagan, our Treasurer Lauren Miller, Alicia Tidwell, Rick Thompson, Eric DeHoyos, Raquel Barone, Chelsea Cox, Alex Worthington, and our new board members for 2021, Wynn Smith and Christine Ollendorf. Hello all. I truly hope everyone is home, enjoying the wonderful banquet meal that was prepared by Mr. Eric DeHoyas and his team, but saving room for that luscious dessert that the wonderful culinary team at Lockhart Independent School District prepared for you. It is my pleasure tonight to introduce someone who I have known for quite a while. He was born and raised here in Lockhart he attended and graduated right here at Lockhart High School and followed the family lead and graduated from A&M University. He demonstrates continuously the love of his wife, his family, and the community in which he lives. He built a business in this community. He serves as co-chair of Chisholm Trail Roundup he, selves, he serves countless hours out there in a 100 degree temperature and never thinks twice because he cares about where he lives. He has served not once, but twice as president of the Caldwell County A&M Club. He's been on the board here at the Lockhart Chamber of Commerce since 2019. He is currently serving as our county commissioner, Precinct 1. It is my honor and my privilege to be able to introduce your new chairman of the board for the Lockhart Chamber of Commerce, Mr. B.J. Westmoreland. My apologies. Thank you, Linda. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And on behalf of the Lockhart Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, I'd like to welcome you all to the 86th Annual Lockhart Chamber of Commerce Banquet and Awards Ceremony. Before I begin, I would like to once again thank all of our sponsors and those of you who graciously purchased tickets for this event. I would also like to take the time to thank the wonderful staff and students at Lockhart High School for not only their time, but also for the use of this wonderful venue that we all know as the Jerry Ohlendorf Performing Arts Center. Like it was for many of you, 2020 will go down as one of the most challenging of years in the history of the Lockhart Chamber of Commerce. While canceled events and an ever toughening economic climate for our local businesses will undoubtedly be the overarching theme from this past year, this was also a time for reflection and action. In 2020, the Lockhart Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, through the steadfast leadership of Ms. Linda Hayden and our dedicated staff, managed to still provide necessary support and resources for our membership and the community. 
Looking ahead to 2021, the Chamber of Commerce hopes to continue to work towards the return and improvements of the services and commitments that our community supports. While we all understand that times continue to be challenging, know that the Lockhart Chamber of Commerce continues to plan for the events and festivities that we are known for. We look forward to sharing with you soon our plans for the responsible and safe return of our monthly luncheons, the Chisholm Cup Golf Tournament, and the Chisholm Trail Roundup Music and Rodeo Festival. In addition, we plan on continuing to improve our membership experience, the continuation of our Leadership Lockhart program, and the strengthening of our volunteer network. It is my belief that despite all of the difficulties of these times, together, this community can and will rise to better days. In closing, I would like to thank again all of our Chamber Board members and staff for their continued service to this organization. We would also like to thank all of our civic leaders for their continued support and dedication to this community. In addition, I offer my thanks to our two outgoing board members who are Mr. Donald Schneider and Mr. Bobby Herzog. Thank you both for your time and your talents. On a personal note, I would like to thank my wonderful family, especially my wife Erin, for their continued and unwavering support. Again, I thank each of you for making tonight possible, and as always, I wish you all good night, good luck, and Godspeed. And now the most important part of the program, the awards. Every year, the Lockhart Chamber of Commerce accepts nominations for Agribusiness of the Year, Business of the Year, Most Worthy Citizen, and Spirit Awards. These are community members who have gone above and beyond to demonstrate a strong commitment to the community. Good evening, everyone, and thank you again for listening to the 86th Annual Chamber Banquet Awards Show. I'm here tonight to speak about someone I consider my friend. He was born and raised right here in Lockhart. He's married to an amazing lady in her own right, raised two children, and has two amazing grandchildren. He retired from U.S. Army after serving 32 years with the rank of Sergeant First Class. He's an Iraq War veteran and currently serves as Chief of Emergency Management for Caldwell County. But tonight, he is here to be honored for being just the person he is. He spends his life in nonstop service to our community. He was past commander of the American Legion Post 41. He worked diligently for St. Mary's Church when he was Hamica chairperson and raised $59,000. He's worked countless drive through meal events and helps the local food pantry with needed deliveries all without being asked. He just shows up to help. His middle name must be Caring. But enter COVID-19 in his day-to-day -day world and the entire community got to see him in action. He organized the Caldwell County Emergency Operations Center. He began an all-out effort to bring hard-to-get PPE to our county. And as soon as testing was available, he aggressively organized and worked testing sites that served over 10,000 folks. And those 10,000 folks weren't all just from Caldwell County, they were from around our area. He made sure that everyone that needed testing could get, take part. Anytime he is called about safety protocols by a citizen, he takes time out to answer their questions. Anytime he's asked by an organization for PPE supplies, he was there with everything they needed. On top of those duties, he participated in fighting countless fires, worked numerous search and rescues, and prepared our county for the what ifs of natural disasters. He is not just doing his job, he excelled. And we, the county, are the benefactors of that caring. It is my distinct privilege and honor to introduce this year's recipient of the Individual Spirit Award for 2020 for the Lockhart Chamber of Commerce to Mr. Hector Rangel. 
thank you. I want to thank the chamber for this honor, uh, but I didn't get here on my own. Um, I have a great team of emergency management personnel, and I'd like to thank them. One of them is Hank Alex, who's my deputy chief, uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife, uh, Joan, uh, Joanne Mayberry, and Tony Schultz as a volunteer, Devante uh, Cole, a volunteer, and a bunch of other people. But the people that matter the most are the jurisdictions that allowed me to get the test sites into their areas so I could test their people. And I plan to have more test sites in the future. But again, I'm doing everything that I can to do the best for the county and bring in all the resources needed to mitigate this issue with COVID-19. Again, I want to thank the chamber for this honor. Thank you. My name is Missy Hagan, and I'm here to present the 2020 Lockhart Chamber of Commerce Nonprofit Spirit Award. In 2020, this organization has worked providing support for our children, youth, and families within our community. Despite the circumstances that occurred in 2020, they managed to initiate several charitable events, including Easter activities, a prom dress drive for 20 young ladies, back to school events, essay contest, Thanksgiving meals, assisted with coats for kids, and Christmas activities. Initially, starting from her garage and moving into a facility, they have now outgrown that facility and moved into a new office. Their goals for 2021 are new programs and opportunities. Among them will be a mentor program. They are grateful for the continued support of the community and look forward to continued growth and giving. Tonight's recipient for the 2020 Lockhart Chamber of Commerce Nonprofit Spirit Award is Charity Cottrell and 412 Kids. Thank you. It is my honor to accept this award on behalf of 412 Kids. Mm -hmm. 412 Kids is an organization. It is not just me. We're merely the hands and feet of everybody in the community that supports us. If you donated in any way, whether financial, with your time and talents, mm -hmm. a pair of shoes, a prom dress, Thanksgiving meals, or Christmas present from our kids, you guys are the ones truly getting the award tonight, and I appreciate it. We've done a lot from our garage to our new facility and want to thank God first and foremost for giving us this vision and allowing us to see this through to completion and as we look through 2021. Again, thank you. Thank you, my board and our volunteers, which we are, I'm going to put a shameless plug in, a 100% volunteer organization, and our volunteers put in over 2,000 hours last year in 2020. So if you're looking for a place to volunteer, we'd be glad to have you. Again, thank you for the chamber for providing us this opportunity, and thank you to everybody who was involved. This really is your award. Tonight I'm here to present the 2020 Lockhart Chamber of Commerce Business Spirit Award. This individual is a Lockhart native and is a 1997 graduate of Lockhart High School. Since starting his business in 2008, he has been committed to not only providing a high quality photography experience for his clients, but has also dedicated and donated countless hours for photography services for the Lockhart Little League, the Lockhart High School Athletic Booster Club, the Lockhart Police Department, the Lockhart City Council, Lockhart Independent School District, the Dickens Christmas Festival, and the Chisholm Trail Roundup Festival. While he and his wife Rosie reside in Austin, he still manages to dedicate an enormous amount of time to the Lockhart community. Through the lens of his camera, we have all been treated to a stunning and beautiful showcase of everything Lockhart has to offer. For his continued service and providing an unrivaled visual history of our town, it is my honor to present the 2020 Lockhart Chamber of Commerce Business Spirit Award to Adrian Gutierrez Photography. Hi, my name is Adrian Gutierrez. I am very thankful to Lockhart Chamber of Commerce for presenting me with the Business Spirit Award. Uh, my favorite thing about photography is being able to share to everyone, um, especially in the city of Lockhart, showing all the great things that this city has to offer. Um, even though my wife and I live in Austin, I will always have a place here in Lockhart. Um, I enjoy being able to share to all of my friends and the public about everything that the city has to offer. Um, it is a great honor and I'm very thankful for all of this. So I appreciate it very much. And for those that um, 
ever come to Lockhart, make sure you always try out the barbecue. Thank you very much. Bobby Schmidt, who was Agribusiness of the Year last year, and the Caldwell County Farm and Ranch, who won the award three years ago, joined me in recognizing Alton Holman as Agribusiness of the Year. Alton is a Lockhart boy. The roads out in North Caldwell County are named Holman Road and Holmanville Trail, so you know his roots go deep. A few years ago, his father, Reinert Holman, won this award, and now Alton follows in his footsteps. Also, here is Vicki, his wife and partner. Together, they raised two sons who grew up showing animals at the Caldwell County Junior Livestock Show. Every animal, Alton said, except rabbits. Uh, Alton uh, was on the board of directors for the Junior Livestock Show for many years. Now, both of those sons have graduated from Texas A&M, and they have children that are showing animals in the livestock programs. They're a true Texas agricultural family, carrying on traditions like making sausage every January, helping neighbors when they need it, reverencing and taking care of the land. Alton is foreman of two ranches and along with his own herd, takes care of about 225 cows. He worked at the auction ring for about 10 years, so he knows cattle and he knows the market. He's also great at barbecue and participated in the barbecue cook-offs during Chisholm Trail. Agriculture, love of the land, Conservation, these have made America the breadbasket of the world. Alton and Vicki are representatives of those American values. So it's with great pride and congratulations, I present Agribusiness of the Year to Alton Holman. Thank you very much. I'd like to say a few words to some people. I need to thank uh, the King family for having the opportunity to take care of their manager ranch and also the Ollendorf family that I've been taking care of managing theirs for about 10 years. So I've had a blessed opportunity and thank my wife for supporting me and putting up with all this. Thank you all very much. It has been said that small businesses are the heartbeat of every community. If this statement is to be true, then Lockhart, Texas has one healthy and loving heart. But you do not need me to tell you this. You already knew that local businesses mean everything to the city of Lockhart and to the Lockhart Chamber of Commerce. A local business not only provides the services of what that actual business is, with blood, sweat, tears, great luck, money concerns, sleepless nights, tremendous success, and many, many prayers. But that local business donates money to so many local causes. They buy advertisements and athletic programs and newspapers, celebrates the community's children and their accomplishments, purchases the kids 4-H animals at the stock show, sponsors various activities in the community, such as Dickens and Chisholm Trail Roundup and Rodeo, sends kids to summer camps, sponsors youth sports, provides scholarships, and so many, many more things that I could go on forever about so many more. A local business also offers connections. Perhaps a new family moves to town. A local business might be the first smiling face a new family encounters in their new community. This business might provide information such as kindness or a meaningful memory to a family hoping for happiness in their new community. 
A local business can make someone feel at home immediately, or perhaps even act as a second home to those who frequent often. Lockhart, Texas is beyond fortunate to have such a business that meets the things already mentioned and previously. A local business that when one walks in, everyone knows your name. A local business that one is aware to sponsor activities for your children and our community. A local business that one always knows that can be counted on and always will be there for them. A business that has been able to endure and thrive in this crazy year of 2020 and this unforgiving COVID pandemic. A local business that truly makes you proud that you can call Lockhart, Texas your home. The Chamber of Commerce is most appreciative to have the member be also essential in the thriving heartbeat of our wonderful community. In fact, the Ch Chamber of Commerce truly could not survive without the commitment, dedication, consistent promotion, and the wonderful support received by the amazing group of people and their families. Do you all have any idea who business of the year for 2020 is? Well, it's you. That's correct. It's all of you. For all the businesses that continue to make us so proud to call Lockhart our home through these hard financial times and our Lockhart Chamber of Commerce members. Y'all are so worthy and it is an honor to announce that you are the quality and the heartbeat this community is so proud of, supporting each other through all local businesses. Congratulations to you all for being Lockhart Chamber of Commerce Business of the Year 2020. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for the presentation of the 2020 Lockhart Chamber of Commerce Most Worthy Citizen. It is customary for the previous year's Most Worthy to present this award, but Vance Rogers is unable to join us tonight. We all wish Vance the very best. This person began their career in one field and then took a turn in a totally different direction. Then that turn brought them back in touch with their first career. It sounds a bit confusing, but it has had a huge effect on our entire community. Her family moved to Lockhart when she was 12. She graduated from Lockhart High School in 1974, from Southwest Texas State in 1979 with a degree in medical technology. Six years, six years later, after drawing lots of blood, she turned in her needles for a real estate license. Even with her career change, she never lost sight of the need for medical care on the local level. She served on the Mara Health and Lockhart Hospital boards for three years before the Lockhart Hospital closed. She was acutely aware of the need for routine as well as urgent care in her community, and she worked tirelessly to bring that care back. In 2000, her efforts paid off, and Seton Healthcare was recruited to come to Lockhart. We now have access to doctors, urgent care, children's care, and more. Seton needed a place to operate, so she and her husband helped secure office space that now totals over 20,000 square feet. So what does she do in her spare time? She served two terms in the Lockhart Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, started her own real estate business that is now 35 years old, served as president, vice president, and secretary of the Caldwell County Board of Realtors, worked on the Kiwanis 5K run, and also ran in it. She has expanded her business twice, the second time renovating the old Goodyear building. She has served on the Board of Directors for the Lockhart, First Lockhart National Bank for over 20 years and served as the board chairperson for three years. And along the way, she and her husband have raised two great children. Slow down, take a break is not in her vocabulary. Along with Alan Fielder and, a, and some others, she began to pursue the formation of the Lockhart Educational Foundation. The purpose of the foundation is to provide grants to teachers for innovative ideas not covered in the LISD budget. She has been one of the driving forces behind the foundation and its fundraising. The grants have grown from around 14,000 in 2014 to 60,000 in 2020, providing over 300,000 in the last six years. She has served her community by her forward thinking, 
unwavering drive, and the desire to make Lockhart a better place to live. Tonight, along with her husband Jim and her children, Wynn and Lee Catherine, I present to you Amelia Pierce Smith, the 47th most worthy citizen of Lockhart, Texas. Good evening. Thank you for attending the 2021 annual Lockhart Chamber of Commerce banquet. Um, I had been isolating downtown last week from a COVID exposure. Um, got a call to go downstairs to receive or to be presented with a uh, spirit award from the Lockhart Chamber. Um, the first thought I had was, what in the world have I done to deserve a spirit award? Um, did go downstairs that afternoon. Uh, masked and distanced from everyone, and was presented the Most Worthy Citizen Award from Carl Ohlendorf and others who have received it in the past. I just want to let you know I am forever thankful for the award, I'm very humbled and very resolute, uh, humble to walk in the shoes or behind the, those who have received it in the past, um, very, very worthy individuals. One that was actually missing is Vance Rogers, who we are all in prayer for and for his family. Um, and I am resolute to continue to work to make Lockhart a better place. There was a time when my high school class kidded me about being uh, Lockhart's cheerleader. And I can assure you, I took that as a compliment. I'll continue to try to do better and more for Lockhart in the future. And I hope you all have a safe and happy 2021. Thank you. Congratulations to all of our award winners this evening, and thank you for your continued service to our community. I would again like to recognize our sponsors for making this program possible. Our premium presenting sponsor, Central Texas Refuse, platinum sponsors, First Lockhart National Bank, Pegasus Schools, Blue Bonnet Electric Cooperative, The Original Blacks Barbecue, and Texas Farm Bureau. Our gold sponsors, My Emergency Room 24-7 and GBRA. And our bronze sponsors, Rucker Ohlendorf Insurance and Kinder Morgan. Our supporting sponsors are Wilson Riggin Lumber, Wendy R. Gifts, Buffalo Clover Flower Company, Carolyn A. Bryant, CPA PC, Logos, and Lockhart Sports Medicine. This concludes our program this evening. I hope all of you have enjoyed your meal and our program from the comfort of your homes. Good night.